Thank you. All right. Ready? In a continent where nations are racing to become a digital economy, Africa suffers from what I would like to call SOD, shortage of developers, the real architect of this digital economy. Less than 1% of African school children leave school with basic uh, knowledge of computer science. This is, uh, in this way, it would take us way longer to catch up to this world, nevertheless getting ahead of it. <laughs> nevertheless getting ahead of it. Children are growing in a different world than it was a few years before, with technology embedded in their day-to-day -day lives. These children need not only be passive consumers of technology, but also become creators and innovators of it. And coding, coding would play a huge role in helping them prosper in this tech-driven, rapidly changing world. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nathan Damter, founder and CEO of Blocky a gamified programming learning app for kids. Blocky lets children learn the fundamentals of computer programming through, uh, puzzles, uh, through uh, game puzzles and helping them uh, animate, animate different, different, uh, anim different game characters to perform certain tasks and movements. It presents code concepts, which is primarily, pr uh, primarily presumed as a very complicated things in graphical programming blocks, which are very easy and intuitive to use. Let's go to the demo, please. Our app is primarily built to look as colorful and as attractive as possible for kids age 7 and 13. It's, uh, our courses range from uh, simple intro to algorithms to complex pro problems, uh, problems, and also with free roaming allowing their imaginations to, uh, to take over. Every lesson starts with an instructions, then, uh, then with a game scene, which is either a normal game scene or an AR, which we build to make the learning process much more and interactive. You just have to switch on the, on, we just have to switch it on and press play. As you can see here, we switched on our AR, looking for a space. Here is the instructions, and voila. So here, the instruction was to get the apple using, uh, yep, using the graphical programming blocks. So Ben here will program the kid to move forward and eat the apple, and eat the apple. And when he runs the program, voila. Programming has never been this easy and fun. So. Uh, if done correctly, Ben gets to earn the Ben gets to earn coins, blocky coins, which will be able to purchase different game characters in it. So back to the presentation. <laughs> there are a couple of players in this game industry. Uh, the main ones are Hopscotch, Tinker, Code.org, and Scratch, which are either uh, internet dependent or works in the desktop only, and primarily focusing on. Uh, the U.S. and the European market, for getting, uh, for getting the whole continent of Africa, with one third of the total population by 2015 will be African. On the other hand, Biblocky is a mobile first, uh, as we are positioned to take advantage of this rapidly re evolving technology where our application works fully offline, ensuring inclusivity in regions where internet penetration is very low, and uh, uh, increasing our addressable market. Uh, leverage the cutting edge augmented reality technology to make the learning process much more fun and very interactive. And last but certainly not least, it's a, glo it's a global. It's a global app which have a global reach and appeal, but at the same time remaining relevant to our local audiences. Our primary source of revenue is in-app toy store, where we allow our users to purchase different game characters in our uh, toy store. And our other source of revenue is uh, branded characters, where companies and brands can feature their branded uh, mascots or environment in our app, giving them a unique way to engage with their, uh, with their audiences. 
So what could be a better way for Disney, uh, uh, Barbie, or Lego uh, to have their characters uh, to have their characters in our app and engaging with kids in a much meaningful way? So far, Bblocky has been downloaded more than 5,000 times around the world uh, and around the world with no marketing budget to it. And and uh, we're we're at the beginning, and uh, the future is as promising as as it gets. We have the ad tech industry is growing 17% year to year, and the African gaming market is doubling by 2021. So, if you are an educational institute or a, a, a company working on the ed, uh, ed tech sector, or if you are a, uh, or if you are a, a children's brand, make sure to get in touch. We'd be happy to work with you. And before I go, I want you all to, do, uh, to know something. Most African tech founders start with coding a little late. For me, it was in later in high school. <laughs> but somehow I ended up building some very cool stuff, and that's why I'm here. So imagine what a, what a child can build if they are introduced to coding while pretty, at their pretty young age with the right tools as be blocky. Thank you. Judges. Um, it's very cool what you're doing. Well done. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you've seen in the usage of those 5,000 downloads so far? So how long do people stay? What do you see in terms of in-app purchases? Yeah. And also, you know, what it costs to acquire somebody in the first place. So just help us understand the business model a little bit better. Okay. So uh, the, the, user, the users, most, the, most of the users uh, use the application from a range of four, two weeks to a month for now, since we have, a li uh, since we have limited courses contents in, in it. But it, this can go to three months to six months six months as we have uh, as we're adding more contents every time uh, so the uh, the user acquisition cost is uh, uh, so far 30 cents uh, 30 cents and uh, we've been we've been able to do this uh, we've been uh, uh, so we, we haven't yet uh, we haven't yet put out a budget for it but we've been able to get this uh, this kind of uh, users through PRs uh, and through working with schools uh, to to promote it for their stu students. And so, what was the last question? Yeah, in, I think your revenue model you said is in app purchases. I'm, I'm guessing you haven't got that many brand sponsorships yet. Yeah. What are you seeing in terms of the in app purchases? So, it's 30 cents a download, it sounds like. Yeah. The, and then there's a conversion to actually people who are using it. So, okay. And then, so how much do you see on the other side in terms of? Okay. The earnings. So far, so we uh, we haven't yet uh, we we just uh, launching the in-app purchases by the uh, first quarter of 2020, but we've been able to predict it. Uh, we've been able to predict for that uh, for the next uh, for, uh, for for the next three years to reach to 200,000 uh, 200,000 dollars when we reach about uh, more than 500 uh, uh, thousand users within the next three to five years. 200,000 dollars for 500,000 users. Users. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Tom, how are you working cre to create oh. content? And are you wor to ensure that it works and people actually learn how to uh, code? Uh, as in about the contents? The, how do you create the content to okay. be sure that the content is actually h helping people learn? Okay, so we work closely with a uh, with a programming center in our in, in Ethiopia and in, in Addis Ababa. So we we work we see closely what the kids are learning and we just create the contents from uh, what we're seeing there. And we also follow a curriculum on uh, code.org that provides a free curriculum uh, to implement uh, coding education for children. Yeah, so that's where we get our contents. Thank you. Did I answer? Yeah. Can you tell me, uh, what, what age of children are you targeting? Uh, seven, uh, seven up to 13. Seven to 13. Yeah. And um, what is the feedback from those kids? Because obviously they're downloading on their parents' devices yeah. and playing and, and stuff. So we've been uh, we've been trying to get the feedbacks by just uh, seeing the kids. So they really they really like and enjoy the game scenes. Uh, the game scene they're looking at. So the first thing when they when we give them the app, the first thing they see it's, it's a game. Uh, it's a game. So that's one thing we like about it. And the comments about the AR. So they've been very engaged engaged to it. Uh, they've been it's been very interactive with the AR and they like it. So 
the comments and the feedback from the kids is pretty much positive. And uh, if we work on a, li uh, a little bit on the contents, uh, uh, making it more sticky, I think it would turn out very well. And what's the stepping stone after this, after they've been tricked through gaming to enjoy coding? Yeah. What, what do they normally go to after this? So, uh, so this, our application is an uh, intro to computer programming for people that have, for kids that have never been, uh, that have uh, never programmed before. So the next step would be, uh, the next step would be, uh, we don't have it in our app yet, but we're trying to build, uh, uh, not anytime soon, but in the future, we're trying to have uh, advanced uh, programming education in our application. Uh, so for them, they just get an introduction to it. So by the time, if they want to learn, uh, if they want to continue in the programming, there will be advanced courses. We suggest advanced courses, but not in our application. Thank you. All right. That's it. Other questions? Um, yeah, just one more about like the difference between your app and Scratch, for example. So a lot of kids are using Scratch. Okay. You said I think it's mobile first. You felt it had an element of localization. Yeah. Can you just expand upon that a little bit, please? Sure. So uh, Scratch uh, is a Scratch is a fully desktop application. Yeah. So starts, uh, Scratch doesn't start with a mission with a goal. It just gives you the tools, and uh, the courses, the curriculum comes from uh, somewhere else. So or the teacher have to give the instructions. But for within for our application, everything comes within within it, as in the instructions. Uh, the instructions and the, the tools together. So we have a goal. As one, one, when a kid finished the, when a, fi when a kid finished the working on it, working on a, a given task, he actually finished the goal. As in maybe he learned about uh, the if or the conditionals or anything. But the scratch is just a tool. As in basically an IDE for any as as the similar as uh, okay. other IDE. Okay. So in short, you need a teacher to work with Scratch and the kid, whereas yeah. in yours, the instructions and the development yeah. are coming in app. In app, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, one more round of applause for B Blocky. <laughs> we have a final startup you. presenting you. in this round of the startup battlefield. That startup is Scaled 